Okay, hi guys. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Go's interfaces, and uh, we will be seeing some examples from internal modules like I/O Reader, and uh, we're gonna be looking uh, from scratch that how we can create interface and how different concrete types can implement this interface. So basically, interfaces in GoLang, uh, you can say, are really powerful tool, uh, which defines a uh, set of methods, right? Uh, if that if those methods are implemented by any type then uh, we can say that that uh, particular type is implementing that interface right? so interfaces actually help us achieve polymorphism as well okay so we can use a single interface to represent different types of values uh, in our program uh, you can think of interfaces as a contract if any type satisfies particular contract by implementing all the methods defined in the interface we can use it interchangeably then right? so let's just start coding so firstly what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be defining a simple interface here so just call it item interface this item interface would be uh, exposing a method we'll just call it color right? and this color method would be returning a string. Now let's just define a struct. I just call it a ball, right? Now uh, this ball struct uh, would be said implementing this particular interface if it gives the implementation to this method. So what we can do, we can create a receiver method and. Uh, I'll just return string now this uh, method you can write your own custom implementation depending on the concrete object that you are using okay so let's just return as of now return from ball okay now similarly let's just create another uh, concrete type another struct basically let's just call it fruit okay and uh, struct now we have to implement the method again. Okay. This time it would be for fruit. Right. So we can change this return value as from fruit. Now if you see we have uh, 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 interface here which is said to be an abstract type and we have two concrete types ball and fruit both of these concrete types are implementing this item interface. Now, why they are implementing this uh, item interface? Because they have given the definition to this method, to this behavior that is exposed by this interface here. Yeah. Uh, right now, if you see, we have created a value receiver method. In a way, you can create a pointer receiver method as well. Okay, so depending on whether you want to modify the uh, object in your method it can be a pointer receiver and if you don't need uh, modifications as such so then you can keep it as a value receiver as well for us i'm keeping it as a value receiver now let's just create a func main okay now in this uh, func main i'm going to be creating a slice that will accept the values of type item Okay. Now, any uh, any concrete type that is implementing this item interface can be inserted in this slice, right? So, firstly, we're gonna be creating an object for our ball, right? So, ball equals to ball, and similarly for our fruit, so. Now, if I just add this two values inside my slice, we can use append method to do that. So SLC equals to append, and uh, just pass the SLC, and we can pass ball here, and we can pass fruit. Okay. Uh, one more important thing that I would like to tell you about here is this append method. So if you see this append method, it is taking multiple arguments here. We are passing the original slice that we just created above. 
and then we are passing the ball object and when then we are passing the fruit object here as well okay. uh, because this append can take multiple argument these type of functions are called as variadic functions in golang and in most of the other programming languages as well in javascript we have something called as rest operator which are uh, kind of uh, you know is linked with it like kind of similar approach it has now uh, as you see we are uh, we have pushed all the values that we have created for ball and fruit in our slice here now let's just iterate over our our slice and let's invoke the method color so i'm going to be using a range operator and i will be iterating over my slice this and just a simple fmt.println and let's just call vv.color so now depending on the type uh the particular method that you have given the definition here would be called so if i run it okay so if you see here we have uh, from ball here and then from fruit so a dedicated method of that particular concrete type would be invoked right so this is how uh, the interfaces are very much uh, feasible when you are writing uh, uh this particular code where you can where your function needs to have or where your slices or arrays uh needs a common type and then you can just uh, pass an interface and you can just put any type in it which is implementing that interface in our case it is fruit and ball okay. this is a simple example of uh, interfaces in here Uh, interfaces are very powerful when you are doing mock when you are mocking something when you are doing mock testing in your application they they are very helpful so generally we don't uh, let's say like we have a struct and uh, we are some doing we are doing some db operations so obviously it is not possible for us to mock that particular db connection or mock that particular maybe a repository or a service so what we do we generally create a mocks for them right and mocking is only possible if the other type is accepting an interface okay so now we're going to be looking into another example we're going to be talking about io reader interface and how looking into is we're going to be talking about the buffio package this buffio package has the scanner uh, concrete type that uh, implements the io reader interface okay so let's just look into an example here so function take user input okay and uh, let's just create a input object by calling buffio.new scanner so if you look into this buffio.new scanner it is taking the io reader interface okay that means we can pass any type in here that actually implements io reader interface so what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be bringing up os dot standard input now this os dot standard input is uh, if i go here right so if you just look into this implementation it is returning a file pointer so this file pointer if you just look for this read method here right this file concrete type okay file object is implementing this read method now this read method actually is available inside i o writer so if i go to the definition of i o writer here okay sorry it's i o reader not writer so if i go in the definition of i o reader we see that it uh, like just has this method called read and any type that implements this uh, method would automatically be implementing the reader interface so in our case this file here is implementing this method Okay. So what I'm going to be doing next is uh, I can just pass the standard input in here. So now it satisfies the dependency completely. Now next, if I want to take the input from the user, what I can do, I can just use input dot scan method and can wait for the user to input. And once the user has inputted, what I'm going to be doing, I will be just printing out input dot text. I just run just run our code again. So I have to call this method take user input. So 
So if I just do hello world, it just prints out hello world. So yeah, this is just a uh, most basic example of how the interfaces are used in Golang library, right? Golang libraries that are internal to Golang. Uh, another example for this uh, is what we can do is we can take a file and read uh, the file as well. So again, I'm going to be using the same thing. So I'm going to be creating another function. So I'm going to read file. Now for reading the file, it would be using the OS package. So I'm going to be using os.open method, which takes the name of the file, or I would say the path of the file. Here in our case, I'm going to be passing the data.txt that as, as the file is available inside the same directory in which my main.go lies. Okay. Now it returns two things. It returns a file pointer, I'll just call it FF, FP and error. Right. So I'm going to be checking if error is not equals to null. And if it is, then you can just log it out. Log dot, I just use panic and error. Now, if you just closely look at it, right, this is an OS file pointer. Now, if it is an OS file pointer and file actually implements the read interface, read method of IO reader interface. So we can easily pass it here inside our buffio.new scanner, right? So I can easily pass my file pointer here. Now, same thing right and in this way we can read the contents of our file as well so now if I run our code first let me just call this method okay so if I just do read file so hello world and hello goofers right so this is the data that is in my file and we are able to print it out so this is just a simple explanation of how interfaces work. Interfaces are really powerful if you use them wisely. And uh, uh, every internal library of Go is designed so somehow to use interfaces. Like we just saw that how IO Reader does that. In the next session, uh, in the next video, we're gonna be learning about how IO Writer does that. Okay, thank you, thanks for watching.